Yeah, I just flipped the lights on. The door was just open. Basically anything that could ruin a company, we try to access. So we're about to hit up a power substation. It's surrounded by a barbed wire fence. We will get in, there's no doubt about it. I'm in the building. Server room. We're not seeing cameras. I think the surveillance sign is a lie. It's kind of creepy, yeah. We are the attacker team. We are offensive security. Our, our goal is to achieve full access. I'm extremely optimistic. This guy, holy buckets. The wonderful thing about all of this is it's perfectly legal. <laughs> we like to bring in a mix of people with different technical skills. We're going to pretend like we work here. My specialties, if you will, really involves social engineering. Now what I'm doing is I'm going to download some malicious scripts. Uh, background mainly in application pen testing. Given a determined enough attacker, it doesn't stand a chance. I come from the military, specifically the Army as a paratrooper and a medic. I originally practiced doing this stuff at home. Uh, penetration tester, uh, usually focus more on the network side of things. You need to have the ability to kind of think outside the box, then you can start to hack stuff. So we're currently on our way to the first office location where we'll be basically conducting reconnaissance just to see what the area looks like, where we're gonna gain access, uh, what things we need to be aware of. We're sort of close. There's the offices. Anytime you're going to break into a building, you have to be aware of people. You have to be aware of the security controls that they have in place. A reconnaissance is going to help us figure some of that out. The target will be on the left. And this is the employee parking. Looks like there is not a fence along the wooded area. Drive casual. <laughs> the goal is going to be look at different approaches. Over here is all a neighborhood. And this, this is wooded. But there's no fence here. Look for cameras, try to get a sense of when people are going to be there. Office, office, uh, a bunch of cameras out on this side. What the surrounding area looks like. Are there neighbors who are going to see what we're doing who might call the authorities? We've got residents, so if anybody sees us, we've got a problem. It looks fairly accessible. It'd be fairly simple to have somebody enter from the wooded area or simply just drive up into the employee parking lot like you belong and just walk up to the door. Uh, assuming there's not anybody inside, we should have free reign of the place. Social engineering is also referred to as people hacking. People are the number one weakness from a security perspective in any organization. Our costume is basically a technician. So you've got a polo, jeans, work boots. In order to capture some of this, we've also basically used a GoPro inside of a small satchel bag that's a, it's a bag camera. Right now him and Paul are in the, in the lobby. Talk, talking to the receptionist, they dropped two of our contact names. Contact him over here. Check on some speed issues and some uh, other stuff with the internet. Looks like they're getting visitor badges. It's not that unexpected that your internet service provider might show up to test if you're having speed issues with your network. Do we want to get the visitor badges? I know we got it. Doing a lot of sighing, which is Typical of what we should be doing, kind of creating a sense of inconvenience, hoping to play on her you know, willingness to want to help people. Confidence is extremely important. 
and that will come naturally having done your homework in terms of uh, researching a company and, and solidifying a pretext. It sounds like the receptionist is a little open, but this guy is very skeptical at this point. We look like we're about to go raid some shit. The thing about this, besides the fact that it is by far the most fun, <laughs> is you gotta think on your feet. We are going to try to get past physical security controls. Of course, we're an ethical hacking company, so what that means is we're not gonna break stuff. <laughs> okay, so you guys are gonna go in first. I think we should wait for you in the garage. Mm -hmm. So that when you get to that back door, we can just let you in. We went in in two teams. One team went in uh, through a wooded area where it wasn't fenced in, approached the back door. The other team simply parked in the employee lot and walked to the employee entrance as though that's where we're employees. We're supposed to be there. Some doors, you can use what's called a shove-it tool. It's basically a way just to get in there and get the door to open. Make a dash for that dumpster. Ready? We have a tool that we can use to go underneath the door to snake up to grab a handle and simply pull down on the handle from the inside and open the door. Sometimes the doors aren't locked. I mean, first thing is just check if it's open. Okay. Okay. Doors open. <laughs> We've already found three iPads and a uh, laptop, so we're, we're doing pretty good so far. Credit cards be mine, including PIN numbers. It's designed to be physically deployed at our target location, that we want to maintain a, you know, ongoing or rather persistent connection. It's a small computer that's just a hardware botnet computer. So what we can do is plug that into an outlet and then into the network as well. Remotely we can control that, uh, install software like malware scripts, uh, penetration testing scripts, things like that. We had free reign of the office space for as long as we wanted, hacked a few computers, had some pretty good success there. In fact, since achieved domain admin credentials in their network just from that visit alone. We got everybody. Everybody has their equipment. Yeah. Cell phones in the truck. Coast is clear still. Walk, don't run. Just walk normal. Walk Calm down, down dude. There's microwaves that go out from a sensor 
anything that's in front of it, it's going to bounce off. That sensor's going to have a resistance and read it back saying, okay, I know something's here. A1 flight right there. Looks like they're on their way back. This was way better than a long ass walk through the cold woods. Given the sensor is so close to the ground, we could just toss Steve over the fence and then block the sensor. Once the sensor's blocked, we wait a minute to make sure that the, the camera hasn't gone off. And then we're in. We actually don't know about the sensor itself, but the camera has 280 degree view, which basically means that it can't see behind the pole that it's mounted on. Okay, we need to get the, the shield out. Oh, you're, you're cold, buddy. It sucks out here. <laughs> what this is going to do is this is going to block the infrared component of the sensor. You should effectively see my body heat disappear. And we're going to send Steve over the fence again. So we're gonna stay as far out as possible that we feel safe and just arc around it. So pretty much looking at a straight on shot to the corner. It's either gonna work and we're gonna be brilliant for it or it's gonna fail miserably. So we're wearing uh, the smog type thing to protect from any arcs that would happen. You wear cotton clothing so that in the event that you get hit with an arc, your clothing burns instead of melting to your skin. Everything is completely self-sufficient in here so long as it stays plugged in. The next thing we're going to do is make sure that we can hit the internal network. We're not going to cut a lock. We might try to pick a lock, but you know, I'm not going to just smash the thing with a hammer. It's an art. When you can't break it, just dismantle it. We're in. It's effectively a, a cloner. We'll be able to capture employees' cards and write them to our own cards to get unfettered access into the building, usually at night. What are you in there? This is the fake badges that we created. Work great. Yeah, actually, I'm just looking for the bathroom. Man, how do you get in? Uh, just through the front right here. Do you have a pass? Uh, no, I don't. This isn't a normal USB drive. We've just written some basic code. When we plug it into somebody's system, it's going to automatically I can basically do anything that he can do on his machine just remotely. We found some unlocked systems, uh, actually dropped some malicious files on them. I can start the microphone on the computer. So I can now start listening to you physically talking. I can take a screen capture of what's on your desktop and take pictures with your webcam to see if you're sitting at your computer or not. No, he, he pretty much got in his truck, showed up and cornered us. Completely honest, my nerves are a little bit shot with this guy. <laughs> These companies understand that they need to have a stronger security posture. It's increasing awareness and companies are starting to do much better. We still have a long ways to go, but we, we're, I think we're seeing improvements out there. Yeah. You think you have all those little holes patched and, and then you find out that you know they found another way to get in. It is a good experience and it is a learning experience. It feels like sometimes you 
take two steps forward, but yet, you know, then you're taking two or three steps backward. For buildings like this? Yeah. Really? Right now, uh, in, a, in a lot of ways, the, the internet is kind of like the wild, wild west. Uh, maybe people aren't necessarily dying, but there's a lot of people hacking, and it doesn't take much to do so.